Are you ready to discover the secrets of high converting sales calls, storytelling, and how to unlock the power of influence to scale your business? Yeah. Let's talk about that. Instead of focusing on winning arguments, we're teaching the basic fundamentals of sales and marketing and how we can use them to win in the world of politics, teaching you how to meet people where they're at on the issues they care about. Welcome to The Brian Nichols Show. Well, hey there, folks. Brian Nichols here on The Brian Nichols Show. Thank you for joining us on, of course, another fun-filled episode. I am, as always, your humble host, joining you from our Cardio Miracle Studios here in lovely Eastern Indiana. The Brian Nichols Show is powered by Amp America. Very excited to be part of the Amp America team. Uh, most recently, I just shared an article over on Amp America on some secrets you can learn from an NFL executive uh, who just happened to be on this show here a few months ago. And I go into the details of all you can learn and how to uh, uncover, yes, the one trait that separates the winners from the losers. Go ahead and check out my article over at Amp America. Dot com. Very excited to be part of the Amp America family. Plus, very excited to have our studio sponsor here today, and that is Cardio Miracle. Now, I've been using Cardio Miracle now for well over seven months, I think it is. And folks, I, I just got to level with you. The Cardio Miracle difference, 1,000% real. I was skeptical, candidly. Um, I had John Hewlett on the show back in March. Uh, he's the CEO of Cardio Miracle, and it sounded great. He's talking about this Nobel Peace Prize winning um, formula that is nitric oxide and, and you know how it's going to help improve heart health. And I'm like, okay, this sounds great. Sure, I'll give it a shot. We'll see what happens. Folks, I was floored. Blood pressure. I had a family history of blood pressure. I have a family history of blood pressure, high blood pressure. Start taking Cardio Miracle within like two months. My blood pressure started plummeting. I went from having consistently above average to frankly high blood pressure to now the last two doctor visits perfect. It's like right on point, 120 over 80. You can't beat that. Plus, I've been getting way better night's sleep, which for me has been a huge win. Also being a dad of a uh, less than one-year-old. And uh, by the way, pump at the gym, can't even compare it to where I was before. Like I'm, I'm feeling, I'm lifting so much more. I feel frankly more energized at the gym and it's all because of Cardio Miracle. So I've been ranting and raving now for like seven months here on the show about how excited I am, not just to have them as a sponsor in the show, but frankly, to be able to see that this, this solution actually works. So if you want to go ahead and take part in the cardio miracle difference for yourself, well, folks, it's super easy. All you got to do is go right below today's video or into the show notes if you're listening to us on your traditional podcasts and just click the link. Click the link in the description. It's going to bring you right over to our friends at cardiomiracle.com. When you arrive there, you will have the opportunity, yes, in fact, to purchase the best heart health supplement in the world. And you can use code TBNS to get 15% off your order. Now, if you are like me and you're like, Brian, this sounds a little too good to be true. You have nothing to worry about because there's a 100% money back guarantee. So yeah, literally you have nothing to lose besides the sleepless nights, that little, little baby pump you have at the gym. Plus get that blood pressure under control. One more time, cardio miracle. It is in fact the best heart health supplement in the, uh, the world. Join the tens of thousands of other folks who are experiencing the cardio miracle difference for themselves. I guarantee your heart will thank you. And by the way, in terms of uh, your heart thanking you, how about your brain thanking you? And that's going to be for listening to today's episode. And in the industry, we call that a segue because today we're going to be talking about, yes, how can you, in fact, improve your sales, improve your storytelling, all while maybe living your values out loud to help discuss that and more. Joining us today on The Brian Nichols Show, Justin Janowski. Welcome here to the program. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, Brian. Great to have you on the show, Justin. I'm really excited to dig into all things sales, storytelling, but also living your values out loud. But before we do that, Justin, I would love for the audience to get to know you and get to learn your story and specifically in the world of sales and, and helping uh, businesses with, with coaching and such, how you're bringing the, the world of faith, of, of God to the table and also being able to teach while at the same point in time living those values Justin, the floor is yours. Where do you want to start? Yeah, man, I'll start here, Brian. When I was 18, I got my first sales job. I sold Cutco kitchen knives. Have you heard of Cutco? <laughs> By the way, oh my God, that's fantastic because I think some of the best sales folks I've had here on the show 
always start with, have you heard of this company called Cutco? Namely, right. one of my uh, my old co-hosts here, Jeremy Todd. He's an old Cutco um, alum. He, he raves about the sales process. So you're already starting off on a, on a great starting point here, Justin. Yes. The, uh, the Cutco mafia, as we call it, runs deep. <laughs> it's like an alumni uh, of people who went on to do successful things in business and life. I think uh, that direct sales experience was huge for me. I was there for four years. I hired my first coach while I was at Cutco, Hal Elrod, who wrote The Miracle Morning, which is a pretty big sensation about how to start your days. And as I got exposed to coaching, I thought, wow, this is really cool. This is really interesting. I enjoyed it. And I began to have the idea that someday I could be a coach. I left Cutco and I got into business business sales, selling packaging for a while. Then I went into financial planning and was selling insurance and investments and those sorts of things. Hired my next coach, Ben Skemper. And as I was working with him, realized this is what I want to do. I want to be a coach as well. And he said, well, why don't you start with us? Why don't you come on and be our lead salesperson? We're a startup company. We could use support and you can learn the business. And so I did that for four years. And then I ultimately decided to launch Faith to Influence specifically because the company I was with, and this is true a lot in the, the personal development space, it was very spiritual, but it wasn't Christian. And so it just didn't quite fit with my value system, quite fit with my faith. And the divide grew over time. And so eventually I had a moment where I just realized it wasn't what I wanted to be doing. And I thought, I want to like bring my Christian faith. I want to bring Jesus into the work I'm doing. I still want to work with people on sales and business and entrepreneurship. I just want to be able to pray for them. I want to invite God into the space and call him God and call him Jesus and, um, and use the language that really resonated with me. And so I launched Faith to Influence and I didn't know what it was going to be like starting out as a new coach, but, and, and what I'd received from a response, you know, when you're looking at the faith piece of it being included, but I collected over 250 grand in revenue my first year and it's been off to the races since then. And I've now focused primarily on helping new Christian coaches launch and grow their businesses and really overcome a lot of the old stories they have around sales and the mindsets and things that have created resistance to them having the success they could otherwise have. That's so cool, Justin. I mean, just to start out, right? Like that's a really cool niche that you have found success in. And and we talk about this a lot here on the show. The riches are in the niches. And you have found a very you know, a very important niche to go after. And that is not just folks who are looking for some help in sales, but I love the fact that you're tying in the the faith base, right? And and you know, I come, I'm a PK, I'm a pastor's kid. So I, I've lived this life. I, I know exactly what you're referring to, you know, you want to be able to target this, this you know, demographic of folks, but and on the other side, there's the, I don't say fear, but maybe it is fear, right? The uncertainty of, do I, do I want to bring this personal side of me into the professional world? And I see this, you know, in the, the corporate arena, you know, I'm, I'm in the, the corporate sales arena. I see it every single day, folks who are like, Hey, are, are we offline? Hey, really quick. And then they'll go and they'll tell me what they actually think. And I'm thinking, you know, it would really mean something more if, if I was able to hear this during our normal conversations, not just the aside conversations. Cause I think Justin, and I'd love to hear your, your thoughts here too. Like I'm finding more and more that people by and large, either they believe what we believe, or they are kind of like same church, different pew. They're just afraid to verbalize it. Like I'm having this happen right now, uh, going back and forth with some of my alumni from my my college is like we're, we're writing a letter talking about how PO'd we are with the way that the college has been embracing some very backwards uh, you know, ideologies in you know, going back to the genesis of the 2020 COVID pandemic and, and you know, where we are today. And I was blown away <laughs> at the feedback I got when I'm reaching out to some some classmates and folks who were either you know in the same world or at least they were in the kind of same um, area as me at college. And you know it's a smaller college. So everybody kind of knew everybody, but I never thought that these folks would be, I, I, I hesitate to use the term on my side, but like you never really think about that because the the idea that's promoted is that there is a a status quo mentally speaking for everybody, but the reality is that I think the real status quo is quite deep below the surface compared to what people present themselves as. And one perfect example before I turn it over to you, Justin, is in this exact um, situation where I'm talking about my college, I'm looking at one of the people I reached out to and she she came from Eastern Europe. She was an immigrant. She was in her like, you know, I think like young teens when she came to America went to college and and she saw how the college embraced this and they call it uh like it's, it's the dei stuff right the diversity equity inclusion really embracing that and she's like wait what like this 
I, I'm from Eastern Europe. <laughs> like, I don't. Why am I a bad person? I, I am supposed to be the the like the new person coming to the table and bringing my values. But no, 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 you're not. Those aren't the right values we want to promote. Mm. And she's just like, are you kidding me? And she kind of stayed quiet for a while. And then I start talking to her and find out she she's going crazy behind the scenes, not being able to speak out loud what she believes. So mm. I say all that, Justin. Here you are, right? You're you're not only speaking what you believe, but also you're teaching others how to do it. So let's kind of walk through what that looks like. You're working with folks who obviously have some some religious, um, you know, religious fervor. Uh, you know, they're leaning that that mentality. What does the traditional uh, outbound look like for you when you're trying to find new folks? And what can we learn in the you know just traditional world of sales? despite it being in your world, a much more you know targeted niche, but still some of the basic principles and fundamentals that we can take away and apply to just traditional outbound. Yeah. Well, what I know about sales and business is that we're going to attract people who are like us. Love it. And so if we simply embrace who we are in our own authentic way, we find our authentic leadership voice, we share our values forward, we're going to attract the people who are interested in what we have to share. And at least in the entrepreneurial coaching space, there are so many people in the world. There are, all I need is 10, 20, 30 great clients, and I'm going to be wildly successful. And that's true for almost every single coach. You just need to find your 10, 20, 30 people who really resonate with you and your voice and your message. And so if you try to sound like everybody else, you're just going to blend in. Then you notice this politically and in, in, in the marketplace in different ways. The people who are polarizing are dr incredibly successful and on both sides. Uh, people who are more extreme oftentimes attract more people who really resonate with their message. And so it isn't to say one thing's more right than another, but it's just to say that we ought to be ourselves. We ought to show up in our authentic leadership voice and be prepared to attract the clients who want what we have to share. And if we do that, we're going to enjoy our business more and we're going to attract people who really want to work with us, who we have fun working with as well. It's always, it's always good to work with people that you want to work with. I, I, this, this always drives me crazy. I hear sales people are like, ugh. I had to go sell to this type of ICP or ideal customer persona. And I'm like, yeah, because that's who's buying your stuff, man. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Like, if you don't enjoy what you're selling or take it a step further, right? The people you're working with or selling to, maybe, maybe it's time to uh, to reevaluate your choices and what you're doing for an occupation. But um, let, let's actually go back towards the, the actual fundamentals of sales here, Justin. I, I really want to dig into some common objections you hear because in the world of sales, right? We talk about, you're going to hear objections and I like to teach my team, you know, let, let's prevent objections by uh, diffusing or overcoming those objections in our pitch. Um, so what, what do you traditionally see as objections when you're reaching out to small business owners or you're reaching out to, to new you know folks who are looking for some added coaching? What are those initial objections and do they end up playing any type of role when it comes to the faith or is it more mm -hmm. the traditional objections we'd get in a, a normal sales process? I think I'm receiving the traditional objections mm -hmm. that people are used to getting. They can't afford it or they don't have time for it or they want to talk to their spouse or they... Um, you know, they're not sure if it's for them. In many cases, an objection that doesn't come outwardly spoken, but I know is true is that people are wondering if they're good enough. And so they, they think when I'm helping people as entrepreneurs grow successful businesses, oftentimes the internal objection is, sure, I understand that's worked for other people, but am I really good enough to do this? Can I actually have success doing this? Will this actually work for me? And, you know, am I willing to commit and do the work and follow through and get the result to make sure I'm getting an ROI on my investment? And so oftentimes the objection is something different than what's stated out loud. And so what I teach in objection handling is to ask good questions and to find the root of the objection. And then also to help people take ownership of the truth. So as a simple example, if somebody says that they want to talk to their spouse, I get that. And I'm, you know, if I'm making a high ticket offer, a, a 10, a $20,000 offer, I'm going to allow them the opportunity to speak to their spouse, but I want to help them take ownership in their part of the decision prior to talking to their spouse. So I'm going to ask, cool, I understand. I'd probably talk to my wife about a decision like this too, but I want to ask this question. Have you made your decision for you yet? If she says, whatever you think, babe, I trust you. Do you know what you want to do? And help them answer that question first. Do you ever get the the point where you're like, hey, listen, I totally hear it. But like, what objections do you think your wife would have? Like if she was here right now, like what do you think she would say? Or do you actually just go more towards the you personally? What do you think would you know be your, your choice? And then you know, subsequently have that, you know, what my wife would say conversation. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, I really want to focus on them first and the part that they own, the part that they have control over, which is like, are they in? If they're like, I'm in. Well, then when they go talk to their spouse, it can be a completely different conversation. And Justin, they really quick, why spouse. is that important? Why is the I'm in part so important yeah. in sales? Because it's it's how they approach the next conversation. If they have committed that they're in and they want to do this, then they're just getting like a green light and support from somebody who already, when they've already made their decision, like, hey, I really want to do this. Just want to run it by you first versus, hey, I want to get your opinion on this thing. I'm not sure if I want to do it or not. Well, their spouse is in no position at all to help them make a decision to do this thing when right. they haven't heard anything about it. They don't know me. They haven't talked to me. And so they need to go with a firm decision and they need ownership and sovereignty over their own over their own decision. And then, yes, as a marriage, uh, a married couple, I believe that they should make a decision together. They should both be on the same page, but they need to make that decision first and take ownership first. And that's way more important than the objection their spouse is going to have. One thing I want to point out, right? And, and it's funny because we, we see the world. So there's B2B sales and there's B2C sales, right? For folks playing along the home game, B2B, business to business, B2C, business to consumer. And I hear a lot of sales folks try to make it like there is some ginormous chasm between B2B and B2C. But at the end of the day, I think that's not only uh, completely, you know, completely wrong, but actually I think that there's a lot we can learn from both the B2B to world when selling B2C and vice versa from B2C when selling B2B. And specifically one thing I want to highlight here, Justin, you, you painted the picture and, and maybe I'll just use it to help drive it home. It's when, when, when I, when I'm talking about the person being personally sold, we want to know that the person's excited. We want to know the person is all in because in, when I teach my sales team, one of the things I like to, to articulate is when you're, when you're doing sales or you're going through a sales cycle, the number one thing we're trying to do beyond you know trying to get them to ultimately buy our product or service is to help transfer enthusiasm, transfer the emotion, right? So me, the salesperson, I love my product. I love my service. I love my solution because I know it helps solve the problems of my customers. But it doesn't matter how great I know my product is or how many amazing uh, solutions it can help bring to the table or frankly, how many awful problems it can help solve if I don't convey that to my, my prospect. And with that, get them excited because when it's B2C in this situation, you're going to go back and talk to your significant other, right? And I want them to be the salesperson to their, their significant other, in this case, to their wife, right? I, I want them to come home and say, honey, I just talked to Justin and, and he, he's got like this amazing idea. He got me really excited about and get him to tell her how awesome it is. Just like if I'm selling B2B, which I do all the time, if I get you know an IT director or a CX leader on the call and I'm talking to them, I get them all excited. I want them to go back to their team. I want them to be excited when they're talking to their, their other folks in leadership. Like I just had a CEO from a golf company on, my, uh, on, on a call the other day and to hear him how excited he got after the call. And then I'm not even kidding, like within 10 minutes, Justin, I'm seeing like, 10 email addresses pop up on the next calendar invite for folks he was inviting internally literally 10 minutes after our call. So that transfer of enthusiasm, like that is one of the unsung like necessities for successful sales is you have to get the person you're you're working with, your your champion, right in this case, to be that enthusiastic seller internally take the energy that you're giving them and then disseminate it to the other key stakeholders and other key individuals in the buying process who you need to get on board as well. So I just want to highlight that enthusiasm is so key in having successful sales. Yeah. Generally speaking, emotion is contagious. Yes. And so that's why when we watch a movie, if it's really sad or we see people cry or the dog dies, we cry. If we see people laughing, we Marley laugh. and me has always been off of my list because of that. Spoiler alert, folks. Spoiler right. alert. Um, emotion is really contagious. And so one of the things, the first step of our sales process that we recommend is before the sales call begins, getting a pre-call ritual in to get yourself in a peak emotional state. When mm. you're feeling really good, you're going to get better results. So if you're enthusiastic, you're happy, you're excited, you're hopeful, uh, you're peaceful, whatever, you're going to get a better result. I'm laughing, Justin, because yeah. you're talking about doing a pre-call ritual. I do a pre-show ritual. Yes. <laughs> so before you hopped on here, right here, peek behind the curtain, folks. I have a yeah. piano in my studio. I'm over there. I'm I'm rocking out to piano. I'm listening to the little Empire of the Sun, singing high and low, playing along with it. Toss on some uh, level 42, someone about you. Like, yeah, that's what gets me going. It gets me in the zone. And 
I love that. I, I didn't really think about that kind of being like my ritual, but you're right. It yeah. gets you in the mental state you need to be in. Yes. And if you feel nervous, scared going into a sales call, your prospect's going to feel nervous and scared. They're not going to want to make a big decision. If yep. you're feeling enthusiastic to your point, they're going to feel more excited about what's going on. And so preparing your emotional state is one of the big, biggest and most important things you can do. And it can be done through prayer. It can be done through music. It can be done through standing up or sitting down, meditation. There's all kinds of different ways to get there. Some people are going to do push-ups, but finding your equation to get into a peak emotional state is going to help you make more sales. Love it. So Justin, we, we know in the world of sales, people do business with who people they know they like, and they trust. Mm -hmm. So how do we get on the radar of folks to, to know us, to like us and ultimately to trust us. Now I have my thoughts. I, I think storytelling is key. Um, you know, being able to paint the picture for someone to not just hear how your solution works, right. But how it worked for someone like them. I think that's so key. But beyond that, I mean, I mean, and maybe you want to dig into more of the storytelling, Justin, but what are other areas you found to help really build that know, like, and trust? Yeah, to me, I feel like the, the most important thing is having a very clear mission statement. And it, it, we can't become known if we don't have real clarity in who we work with and what problem they solve. If we're a generalist, we're not going to get referred. People aren't going to know us. They're not going to remember us. They're not going to be thinking about us. We want a very clear mission statement as entrepreneurs, business leaders that says, I work with this person solving this problem and this is why it matters. And if we're very clear on that, people should actually be able to remember us by a single word. For me, I'm known by the word sales. So when people have a problem around sales, I come to mind right away. Other people are known for the word marketing or podcasting or whatever it is. You should be known. And so if you're not known, liked, trusted enough, if you're not memorable enough to get referrals that you're not asking for, it's probably because you're not succinct, clear enough about who you work with and what problem you solve, or it's not a meaningful enough problem for people to care or remember it. And so we need to be very clear in the mission statement, the target marketing. After that, everything else becomes a lot easier. So that's honestly most important to me to be known, liked, and trusted. I've got more. I could go more, but I, you know, we could do this for hours, but that's, <laughs> that's, that's the key. That's the most important thing. Well, and I want to quickly just go back to the, the idea of, uh, you mentioned marketing, right? Like some folks think of themselves as marketers. Some folks think of themselves as salespeople, consultants. I, I think, you know, when, when it comes to being effective at sales, you have to, you have to wear many different hats and that's not just for the follically challenge like you and me. It's for folks out there who they, they're small business owners. They need to be able to do all of the different things in order to have success in the world of sales. So if you are a salesperson, you also have to be a marketer, right? You also have to be a storyteller. You also have to be, and again, go down the list because it, it's not just a one, you know, a one size fits all approach. There are so many different avenues to successful sales that I think people just frankly, Justin, they, they don't realize is, is, is really part of the equation, right? They think of, Oh, I have a good, a good product or service. People are going to want to buy it. Right. Mm -hmm. Isn't that how it works? And, and it's just not. And then, and you know, going to the world of politics where, you know, some of the audience during the show is from like, you know, libertarianism, that's kind of the, the, the shtick that we hear a lot of folks want to sell here from the Brian Nichols show audience. But like, it doesn't matter how great the idea is, the ism is, if you don't know how to convey that to your average person. Um, so I, I say all that, Justin, like, what are some of the common misconceptions you see from either entry level sales folks, or frankly, just business folks who they, they have a great product and they're, they're struggling selling it. What are some of those main issues that you see when you first sit down and you're, you're kind of walking and talking through stuff and you say, ah, here's mm -hmm. your problem. What do those usually look like? Well, I've got two in mind. One mm -hmm. is the stories you talked about storytelling. So I'm going to actually think about this in a different sense. Yes, storytelling to others is really helpful, but storytelling to ourselves is incredibly important. And so all of us have stories running around our heads. We call them soundtracks, and they just play over and over and over and over again. And if you've got old stories about what sales is, and you, your stories say that sales is pushy, or sales is greedy, or sales is manipulative, or sales is dishonest, or sales is bad, and you don't believe that you're dishonest, manipulative, sleazy, etc., then you're going to think, well, I can't be a salesperson then. And a lot of people have this old story about sales being something bad that's done to the other person. And because it feels bad, they resist sales. 
They avoid sales. They're less transparent than they should be. They just try to make friends and then maybe a sale will come up later. But the truth is we should be pre-framing our sales conversations as a sales conversation from the beginning and getting consent to sell and being really clear and not hiding behind sales or avoiding it. I know entrepreneurs and coaches who are revising their website for the fourth or fifth time. They've got zero clients because they're doing everything they can other than get on a sales call, which is the thing they need to do. It's because they think sales is bad or making money is bad or yep. evil or something like that. It's just not true. And so we need to rewrite the stories that we have about what sales is, about what money is, and make sure that we remove resistance and trash that's going on in our own heads that's preventing us from selling. Just, I'm going to channel my inner Jordan Peterson, right? Like clean up your own room, damn it. Like that, yeah. that's what it comes down to, right? Yeah. We want to yeah. change the world, but have we changed ourselves? And, and I mean, I look around, the answer is quite obviously no, right? I look at, I moved out of Philadelphia, PA. I saw the writing on the wall. Like, yeah, no, there's a lot of people who they don't got their crap together. And, and not only that, but they, and to your point, right? They tell themselves these stories that frankly, just completely aren't true. And, and a lot of it's based on, on misconceptions or at the very least, um, old ways of doing things, right? Like I think back to the old, the old smile and dial, you know, knock on 400 doors a day kind of salesperson. It was, it was all just activity. And that was back when, you know, the sellers had power because the sellers had the knowledge. And, and <laughs> like, I, I mean, you go to where you are today, that's flipped on its head. Instead of you, the salesperson being the, the, the resource of knowledge, your customer can go on to the internet, search anything they want, advent of AI. I mean, they can ask for context now, right? So you as the salesperson, it's not so much that you're the uh, the, the the one point of contact for the info, but rather you're the point of contact to, to bring it all together, to make it real, make it so it's not just an idea and it becomes a solution. And that's where I think so many sales folks, they, they do, to your point, they get in their own way. They, they tell themselves these fake stories that they've made up for themselves of what a salesperson actually is or what they think a salesperson is supposed to be versus actually going out and at the very base, right? Problem exists. I have a solution. Help paint the picture of how it can help solve that problem. Transfer the enthusiasm to the, to the respective individual and then close the business, right? And you do so based on a mutual understanding that yes, this will help you and you're in turn going to pay me based on the value you're going to derive from my service or solution. And that that's as simple as it is. And yet so many people make it way more complicated than it needs to be, Justin. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, we, we're talking about it today. It sounds easy. Where are folks, I mean, where are they, where are they missing it? Why, why is sales yeah. looked at so poorly? Well, it, it has been used the wrong way in the wrong hands over the course of history. There have been a lot of negative experiences around sales. There have been a lot of dishonest salespeople. That's all you see in movies. That's all you hear from your parents. Like the used car salesperson is a known commodity. You say used car salesperson, everyone knows what you mean and it's got a negative connotation to it. But I believe that we can be a part of changing what sales feels like in the marketplace. And you might recognize that sales in the hands of somebody doesn't have to be what it is in your hands. You have an opportunity to make it completely different. And so you just need to rewrite the story. It probably begins sales with me is... And I believe sales with me is fun. Sales with me is generous. Sales with me is simply making it as easy as possible for the right people to say yes. Sales with me helps people get what they want or become more of who they were created to become. It's a really good thing. Sales with me feels good whether people buy or not. It's coaching with an invitation at the end of it. And so if we rewrite the story for ourselves and we tell ourselves the truth about what sales is with us, then it's going to be different. And then we can show up differently. <sighs> Justin, I just looked at the time. We're already at the, the end of the show. It went too fast. So you know what this means. It's a part one conversation. Yes. We're going to have to have you back on the show for sure. Um, so how about this? As we go towards the tail end of today's episode, remember, this is just part one, folks. So you're going to have to make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss next time Justin's on. But yeah. Justin, as we do wrap up today's episode, like paint, paint a picture, put a nice bow on this episode. Like what do you want the audience to walk away from today's episode really, you know, being able to, to take and then put into action. Yeah. I think the first thing that somebody could do just going off the conversation we were just having is make that decision to gain awareness of the stories and soundtracks they're telling themselves and even how they feel the emotional state that they're bringing into a sales call. Awareness is the first key. So if you get an awareness of, okay, I've been telling myself a story that sales is this, or I've been showing up with my sales calls feeling this way. Well, then we can begin to transform it and you can intentionally decide what stories you want to tell yourself and what emotional state you want to bring into the sales call. 
Justin Janowski is faith to influence.com. The number two uh, link will be in the show notes. But it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. And I love talking shop. This is stuff that I, I personally get some value from. And frankly, I know the audience does too, because whenever we do these sales conversations, the numbers skyrocket. So I'm, I'm really thankful to have you on the show today. And I'm really appreciating the fact that you're walking that line, right? You're, you're living your values out loud while also still being able to help people um, and, and help them actually sell their solutions, their, their services. I, I think that's something that we need more of. We need more folks like you out there helping folks be able to bring these ideas to the very real problems we see out there. And Hey, if we're going to go to the, the, you know, the, the core mission of this show, it's how do we empower entrepreneurs? How do we empower business owners to bring solutions to the table when we do see these very real problems and say, listen, we don't, we don't need to sit and wait for, for three months at a city council meeting to get heard, to, to talk about a problem. We can collectively just look at a problem, say, here's the problem. Hey, I'm a business owner. I'm solving this problem. Hey, you're another business owner. You're solving another problem similar to this problem. Maybe we can work together and not need to go through and you know say, hey, Mr. City Councilman, or hey, Mr. Congressman, can you please give me the money I need in order to actually solve this problem? Oh, well, if we do, we're going to bring in the people we want, and we're going to have all these you know different loopholes you have to go through and different regulations. It's like, no, let, let's just solve it, right? And that is what we do. That is why we talk about sales so much here in the show, because when you're trying to sell a product, a service, or heck, your politics, at the end of the day, you still have to make sure people see that there's a tangible solution that can be brought here and actually put into action. So thank you, Justin, for doing that. Thank you for showing folks how, yes, you can live your values out loud and help uh, you know in the world of traditional business and not have to worry about it being a conflict. And also, thank you for sharing the uh, the, the importance of telling us, you know, ourselves, the right stories, but as much as we tell folks uh, stories outside. So with that being said, where can folks go ahead, reach out to you on social media if they want to continue the conversation. And I mean, hey, beyond just going to your website, I know there's a lot of business owners who listen to the show. If they want to reach out to you, Justin, looking for some uh, help, where can they go ahead and do that? Yeah, absolutely. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube. You can also go to goodsalespdf.com. If you want a copy of our 10-step sales process and our art of influence, some of which we've discussed today, goodsalespdf.com. It's our gift to you for free. I love it. Look at that. Brian Nichols show audience exclusive. There you go, folks. So we'll make sure we include that link in the show notes for sure. And uh, with that being said, thank you, uh, Justin, for joining us. And, and folks, if you enjoy the episode beyond going ahead and giving Justin some love, please go ahead and give the episode some love. When you do, please tag yours truly at B Nichols Liberty. You can find me on Facebook as well as on X.com. Give the episode a share. And uh, you know, in terms of what kind of uh, way you want to share the episode, we have the audio version as well as the video version. So YouTube, Rumble, um, Sovereign, X.com, Facebook, we're uploading the entire video version of the show. If you're watching us on Sovereign or, or YouTube, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit the little notification bell, of course, so you don't miss a single time we go live. And also, please head down below in the comments. We want to hear your thoughts. Are you a small business? owner? Have you been really facing some struggles when you're trying to sell your product or solution? Did today's episode help? If so, let us know down below. We want to hear your thoughts. Also, if you are joining us on the audio version of the show, whether that's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Music, or elsewhere, hit download all unplayed episodes of The Brian Nichols Show. We have over 825 episodes here of the program, and we've had some amazing folks in the world of sales, entrepreneurship. I mean, goodness, I have like four or five books behind me, and I'm pretty sure I've had all the uh, the authors here on the show from Lee Sales to Art Subject to uh, what Victor Antonio and more, all those in between, some sales icons in the industry. Go ahead and give those past episodes some love. I guarantee a handful are going to leave you educated, enlightened, and informed. And one last thing for me, Justin, that is, folks, please support the, those who support us. And that is our sponsors. So uh, the amazing folks over at Cardio Miracle, um, we have a brand new sponsor, the Wellness Company. Uh, we have also some amazing sponsors in uh, Liquid Freedom, Energy Tea, Blood of Tyrants Wine, Ebels, CBD, and more. So please go ahead, support them because they're the folks who support us. That's all we have for you. Justin, any final thoughts or uh, final words here for the audience as we wrap things up today? Uh, just thank you so much for having me. I hope this was helpful and let's do round two. 
Absolutely. Round two is going to be on the uh, the books here soon, folks. So make sure you hit that subscribe button to the Brian Nichols show so you don't miss a single time we go live or, frankly, have Justin back here on the show. With that being said, Brian Nichols signing off here on the Brian Nichols show for Justin Janowski from Faith to Influence. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks for listening to the Brian Nichols show. Find more episodes at briannicholsshow.com.